On Authentic Ag, we conclude our summer series on rural mental health in Kansas. Walt Hill, Executive Director of High Plains Mental Health Center at Hayes. We also have features from the Kansas Soybean Commission, Kansas Department of Agriculture, as well as a weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association and a quick check of markets for Paragon Ag Advisors. I'm Ken Rogers. This is Authentic Ag, brought to you in part by Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919, kfb.org. Kansas Wheat Commission, leading in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online, kswheat.com. And Kansas Corn, building the future of Kansas Corn. Online, kscorn.com. In agricultural news from agview.net, the Department of Labor has issued a proposed rule to modernize the H-2A program. These proposed changes are responsive to stakeholders' concerns and expected to enhance employer access to a legal source of agricultural labor while maintaining protection for the U.S. workforce as well as enforcement against fraud and abuse. The proposal includes requiring the use of electronic filing of applications for temporary employment certification to help reduce the cost and burden. It replaces the 50% rule with a 30-day rule requiring employers to provide employment for eligible U.S. workers for 30 calendar days from the employer's first date of need that also allows a staggered entry of H-2A workers. Now, this staggered entry would allow employers to bring in non-immigrant workers to the U.S. any time up to 120 days from the state of the date of need. The rule is intended to give employers flexibility to accommodate changing weather as well as production conditions. Additionally, the proposed rule would revise the methodology that's used to establish the prevailing wage. The department is proposing calculating wage rates by agricultural occupation. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration announcing it's looking for public comments on potential revisions to agricultural commodity or livestock definitions in its hours of service regulations. Currently, states determine their harvesting and planting seasons and drivers who transport agricultural commodities, including livestock, are exempt from the hours of service requirements from the source of the commodity to any location within a 150-mile radius. Now, this advanced rule put together by the FMCSA would redo the definition of livestock and agriculture commodities in order to make sure that the exemption is consistently applied and has enough flexibility that makes it easy for eligible farmers and commercial drivers to use it. And in the coming weeks ahead, U.S. ethanol plants will sharply cut down on their output. That's primarily to a steep rise in corn prices here in the Midwest, as well as the U.S.-China trade dispute that has both led to weak margins as well as an oversupply. The margins to produce ethanol in the region have fallen to a four-year seasonal low, while ethanol inventories haven't been this high in some nine years. you can find more ag news at agview.net. We'll have more coming up. Stay with us. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. The United Soybean Board has developed a legacy in creating new markets for U.S. soybeans as it has and continues to invest millions of checkoff dollars to research, test, and promote bio-based products. These innovative ideas have come to life through biodiesel, cleaning supplies, and household cabinetry, including soy plywood. 
Columbia Forest Products, a North American manufacturer of hardwood plywood and veneer products, recently celebrated the use of U.S. soy and 100 million panels of pure bond plywood. Farmer leaders and industry partners, including the Kansas Soybean Commission, participated in the milestone event at Crestwood Incorporated in Salina. The plywood product replaces the traditional toxic urea formaldehyde resin with a soy flour resin. With no added formaldehyde, toxic chemicals can be reduced considerably while improving indoor air quality at a comparable cost. In the production of 100 million panels, more than 266 million pounds of soy flour have been used, which amounts to more than 6.8 million bushels of soybeans. Amidst uncertainty with U.S. trade relationships, farmers can be assured that their soybeans are being put to good use right here in the United States with bio-based products like Pure Bond Plywood. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org slash plywood on the web. We're joined by Walt Hill, who is Executive Director of the High Plains Mental Health Center uh, in Hayes, Kansas. We've been following along the last few weeks. Uh, we've been talking about mental health, uh, dealing with agricultural mental health, you know, those on the farm and ranch, but also rural Kansas, and just kind of the general overall state uh, of what's going on. And, and, and Walt, this time around, probably one of the toughest subjects to talk about uh, is, and we've kind of maybe danced around it a little bit, you know, we talk about uh, some, some mental uh, health concerns, but uh, one of those is, is, is death, is, is suicide. Yes. yes. Unfortunately, um, depression and some severe mental health problems, if untreated, can wind up with someone totally losing hope and uh, taking their own life. It's unfortunate, but it's a reality. It's a uh, fairly, uh, pr statistically, we see more folks involved in farming and uh, uh, timber and fishing occupations committing suicide than any other occupation. Folks in our part of the country, the suicide rates are, are higher. Uh, it doesn't have to be. There is uh, hope people can get treated but unfortunately people do take their own lives and it's their own decision. People around them should not feel guilty or responsible. People make those decisions on their own. We hope to get them help, and, but uh, I've had people in my life who have committed suicide or attempted and it's very difficult, uh, but you can't feel responsible. You can feel very badly when it happens. Families feel very badly. It's hard to talk about, but sometimes it's the most important thing to talk about and not keep it as a family secret. I know in my family um, some situations were such that it was a family secret. Uh, we have to talk about it uh, or it's going to continue. Um, there are support groups. Uh, there are around churches, uh, Various organizations have support groups for family members who have lost someone uh, to suicide. Uh, sometimes going to a counselor themselves when you experience this because people feel guilt that it's their responsibility. Uh, the most important thing is we, as a community, give the message that there is hope, um, tr that we train people to recognize the signs and symptoms, get people to help if at all possible, uh, ask the difficult question. And this, uh, this is the most, probably the most difficult thing I'm going to say is it's okay to ask someone, are you feeling like hurting yourself? Are you feeling like committing suicide? It's the last thing that people are gonna ask, but it's the most important thing and you cannot avoid it because you may save someone's life by asking that question. And if you hear that, that 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 request for hope, maybe in a different form than something outright. We need to take those seriously, yes. even if you think it may be. Oh, he's just joking. She's just joking. May not be. Never take it as a joke. People typically do not joke about that. They may say it in a joking way, but we cannot afford to to miss one folk, one person. Uh, who may be trying to tell us that. Let them be mad. I, I always say I would rather that someone be mad at me for the rest of their life than to die today 
of suicide. They can go ahead and be mad with me because I intervened, I reached out to them. I said, are you okay? Are you gonna hurt yourself? And I get them help. They may hate me the rest of their life, but at least they're alive. And there's a suicide prevention hotline as well. Trained professionals yes. that, uh, that know can ask the right questions. Absolutely, there is help every which way you turn. Okay. Walt Hill, who is Executive Director of the High Plains Mental Health Center in Hayes, has joined us. Uh, we'll have more coming up. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotary cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there was a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I wanted to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and take trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities, and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if your cattle get out, you could be held liable for that? Call me, let's have a discussion. 316-945-6733. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. And Walt Hill uh, from the High Plains Mental Health Center in Hayes is joining us once again. We're wrapping up uh, our conversation with him over the last few weeks, uh, talking about just really mental health uh, issues, uh, primarily in, in agriculture and uh, maybe rural Kansas, but really could affect everybody, uh, Walt. And so let's let's maybe uh, kind of wrap it all up and and uh, you know again with our focus being on uh, what's going on in our in our farm farming communities. Um, you know, if you're involved in agriculture, you've got to be optimistic. Right. But sometimes even the most optimists have some challenges. And Absolutely. so uh, kind of wrap all the things we've talked about over the last few weeks in, in, as we move forward. You know, uh, agriculture is a pretty stressful occupation. You don't have control over a lot of the factors uh, that go into it. Mental health problems often arise when people are under sub such substantial stress for a period of time. They begin to uh, wear down and have symptoms of depression, anxiety, trouble thinking. But there is help. One in five people across uh, our country at one time in their life is going to have a mental, diagnosable mental health problem. It's not a moral weakness, it's a medical condition and it can be treated. A uh, vast majority of people who seek treatment get much better, 80%, 90% of people who come to us say they feel much better, they've gotten help, it's taken care of almost all the problem they've had. The key is to walk in the front door to take that longest step, and it will feel sometimes like the most difficult step, to, but it's the most important step to come to get help. Okay, well, so again, uh, as we have said, uh, you're located in northwest Kansas, but there are mental health facilities, mental health centers, all over the state of Kansas. So folks listening and watching, maybe in a different part of the state, um, is the best way to do just kind of Google it and then and, and find something that way? You, you can go Google uh, your county and mental health. You can Google Association of Community Mental Health Centers of Kansas and you'll come up with their website and it lists all the mental health centers in the state. 
uh, and their contact information. Uh, look in your phone book. Most uh, most mental health centers advertise or at least are listed under mental health. Uh, if you're in our 20 counties, call 1-800-432-0333. And we have offices throughout the 20 counties of our area. Even if you aren't in our area, if all you have is that phone number, call us and we can help get you connected if you're in Pittsburgh or Independence or Hiawatha. Okay. Very good. Well, Walt, again, we appreciate the time that you've given us to kind of talk about these uh, very important issues, so thanks. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate your interest in this. This is really important. Walt Hill, the Executive Director of the High Plains Mental Health Center in Hayes, has uh, joined us. And again, mental health is important and, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a, a big first step just to say, hey, I need some help. There are folks there to help you. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldy Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldy Seed today. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. Do your weekend plans include a local farmer's market? It's summer in Kansas, which means farmer's markets are in full swing across the state. And I invite you to join me and thousands of other Kansans who enjoy fresh, locally grown produce, along with a variety of other products made by local artisans. Farmers markets have grown to be a visible and important link between producers and consumers of Kansas products. And they provide farmers, particularly those from small and mid-sized farms, the ability to cultivate closer relationships with their customers. The Kansas Department of Agriculture, through the From the Land of Kansas Trademark Program, works with more than 50 registered farmers markets, providing informational opportunities like state and regional workshops and online marketing resources. KDA also assists the farmers markets with food safety best practices and promotes the markets across the state. USDA grants have helped provide additional marketing tools over the last several years. Farmers markets have been growing in popularity and they serve as a vital part of the culture of local communities. They also keep revenue in those local communities, which helps to strengthen small business and the local economies. Farmers markets and the Kansas farmers whom you'll find there contribute to the health, well-being, and quality of life in Kansas. And of course, shopping at farmers markets can be lots of fun. You can enjoy the variety of offerings, have a conversation with a local farmer, and some farmers markets even have live music in the key part of the season. If you don't know where your nearest farmers market is, you can find an interactive map at fromthelandofkansas.com that will direct you to a farmers market in your area. I hope we'll meet you at the market this summer. 
Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. A recipe featuring a tomahawk or cowboy rib steak prepared by a California real estate agent won season 10 of the Fox Television Network's Master Chef program. Sarah Faraday, a home chef and transplanted Texan, was named the winner with her recipe for tomahawk steak with grilled Brussels sprouts and sweet potato puree. The recipe paired a bone-in rib steak with grilled vegetables and a silky puree for an upscale presentation. To see the winning recipe and learn more about the winning chef and the cuts featured on the show, you can go to www.beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Producers of the program partnered with the Beef Checkoff to bring viewers the Backyard Barbecue Challenge. The program aired July 18th to a nationwide audience on Fox. Featuring Beef It's What's For Dinner on one of television's most popular cooking shows put beef at the forefront for millions of consumers. Research shows when consumers see easy, enticing ways to incorporate beef into meals, they are more likely to purchase it. Partnering with Master Chef is one way checkoff dollars are being used to promote beef in innovative and creative ways. Funding for this promotion was provided by the Federation of State Beef Councils, which includes the Kansas Beef Council. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets? Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. Good morning. I'm Darren Van Vactor with Paragon Ag. The fireworks came a little early this year. We continue to reel from the USDA's planted acres report that showed 91 million acres for corn. A far cry from analyst expectations which were already wide at 81 to 88 with around an 86 million acre on average guess. The corn chart gave ground and back to previous contract highs and other technical support. As for the beans, they received a friendly acreage number coming in below expectations at around 80 million acres and reacted positively last week post-report. However, the bearishness surrounding the corn and wheat move kept a lid on things. Now the lack of forward momentum regarding the trade talks with China at the Japan G20 summit seems to be applying additional pressure on the beans. We continue to pull back initially following corn, but eventually taking the lead as it cannot buy a story of its own at the moment as export exports remain slow 
and we break further into harvest. Although wheat may eventually develop its own story, it may take some time. We will continue to heavily debate the acreage number, conditions, trend line yield for corn and beans and wheat harvest. Keep in mind the USDA's next supply and demand report comes out on the 11th. If you have questions about these topics or the markets, give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors, 888-452-8751. I'm Darren Van Vactor. Have a happy and safe 4th of July holiday weekend. Thank you for joining us for Authentic Ag. If you have questions or comments about our series on mental health or anything else, email me, kenrogers at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you next time on Authentic Ag. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.